Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Diane and I for our flow in love session. Before we start, I would love to guide us through a, a little bit of a grounding exercise. So wherever it is that you're tuning in from, I'm going to invite you. I always do this little wiggle, but <laughs> in your seat. So wiggle around, get comfortable. If the soles of your feet are on the ground, fully feel them connected to the ground. If your legs are crossed, let your hips, ankles, and toes relax. And I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes or hold a soft gaze forward. And once you're settled in your seat, think about relaxing your shoulders away from your ears, softening your belly, and relaxing your jaw. Invite your tongue to widen in your mouth, your eyes to relax, your eyelids to soften, and bring your awareness to your breath. And together, we're going to take three grounding breaths. We're going to inhale through the nose, and then we're going to exhale out through the mouth, slowly and intentionally. So let's start together. Inhale through the nose, filling up both lungs. When you get to the top of your inhale, pause. And then take a slow, deliberate exhale out through the mouth. Two more rounds in your own rhythm. After that third exhale, Come back to your natural breath. Take a moment to just check in to how it is you're feeling. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes, taking in the light and space around you. Mm. So nice, thank you. Welcome back. You're welcome. So for those of you who don't know who we are or either one of us, um, my name is Diana Skander. I'm a love coach and a speaker. And essentially I work with women one-on-one -on -one and in groups to help them move into the most secure, empowered space in their love lives. So really stepping out of their heads and out of overthinking and into their hearts, right? So they can really rise in their feminine and speak your truth so that you really can experience love with more ease connecting heart to heart mm, i love what you do yeah I love what you do <laughs> <laughs> my name is stella artuzo i am a menstrual cycle educator yoga and mindfulness teacher my heart's mission is to help women reconnect and better understand their bodies, reconnect to their womb and their menstrual cycles so that they can live in harmony with their cycle. And so it's not only, this is one of the elements to move more easily through your PMS or premenstrual phase and your like avoiding painful periods, but also learning how to live in harmony with your entire cycle and so you know when to you could be actually thriving versus something you struggle with and um it is totally my mission to share all the things that we were not taught all the things we were not taught in school within our family and to realize how powerful our menstrual cycles are and how intuitive the, the, the inner power of our cycle is and how we could like that could ripple effect into our entire life and that's what we're going to be kind of talking about today. Mm -hmm. um, I work with women one-on-one -on -one also and in group settings in workshop series. Yeah. 
Yeah. And to give you guys an idea, I had asked Stella to do this workshop last year called Flow mm -hmm. and Love because I was noticing, so there was one woman that I was speaking with and she said, you know, I keep breaking up with my boyfriend and then I, and then she was saying, or wanting to break up with him. And when she wanted to like reflect on this pattern, she looked back on her journal and saw that every time she felt this urge to leave her relationship, it was right before her period. So she was like, Hmm, I wonder if there's a correlation there. And then in my mastermind last year, I was having this discussion with the women. I'm like, do any of you relate to this? Like feeling like your, your decisions start to shift around your periods and they're like yes so i asked bella if she could come in and talk to the women about the phases of our cycle and how that may impact your choices your emotional state your um desire to be out in the world or to retreat and so we wanted to put this on again uh, just a shorter version to share with you all because it is beautiful it's a beautiful perspective that you can just allow it to be a tool that you use to help guide you a little further. Stella, do you want to tell us what what does our menstrual cycle have to do with relationships and dating? Like whoever thought they were connected. <laughs> it's a funny when you first think about it, you're like, I don't know, I don't get it. Why would I be talking about this? And then and I could talk about within my personal experience and with the students that and clients that I work with it has everything to do with one another. They are super connected. Um, our moods, how much energy we have, how we show up in the world, our emotions, our mindset, our thoughts, all of these elements. So like looking at ourselves in a physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual realm, all the elements of our being fluctuate throughout the month according to the phases of our menstrual cycle. So this has to do with our hormones and that our hormones will ebb and flow during different phases. So that impacts how we feel, how we show up. So that is going to inevitably inf impact how we interact with the people in our lives. Mm -hmm. Specifically, <laughs> the big highlight, the person that we are in a romantic relationship with and or dating and, um, I feel it's really important to highlight that interaction because we know that in our relationships, those, the, the people who we are in relationship with are the people who like hold up that big, the biggest mirror for us, right? All the triggers, all the patterns, everything is coming up within that setting. That's something that perhaps we can consciously or subconsciously hide maybe even with our friends or our colleagues, you know, like it's stuff that doesn't really come up to the surface as much as it does in you're not in your head and you're going to, you know, all about this, but in our romantic relationships, right? So when we actually know that a, first of all, that there's phases in our cycle, cause some women don't know. Right. So like a, that we have phases, different phases in our cycle and those different phases influence how we are feeling and how we are showing up. And once you know how to support yourself, that's going to change how you feel in your body and how you flow through your cycle. But that's also, that's the ripple effect I was talking about before, is going to change how you interact with your partner. Mm -hmm. And we can see that, and I'll touch base and go deeper into that a little bit more. But like, if we don't know how we are feeling, or why we are feeling the same, the, the way that we are feeling, how can we expect our partners to know? Yes. Yeah. So what I hear you saying is like, because of the shift in hormones, our perspective, our thoughts start to change, our perspective starts to shift. And that's obviously going to impact the way we view our partner, the way we view ourselves, the way we view our relationship, or if you're single, maybe the way you have like less hope or more hope. In, in meeting someone, can you talk to us a little bit about the phases that you're that you've mentioned and and is there a phase in which we are like more magnetic? Let's say someone who's watching this is single and they want to know like when is the phase where I should be more out in the world and like that attraction power is a little extra magnified. Yes. Uh, and we have it. So ladies, we have it. So, <laughs> so there's four phases, as I mentioned before. So it's your menstrual phase, your pre-ovulation phase, your ovulation phase, and your premenstrual phase. And then that comes full circle. After your premenstrual phase, you go back into your menstrual phase. Mm -hmm. 
um, I'm going to liken these four phases to the seasons. So we yeah. are cyclical beings. And there's one of the elements of me talking about how we, our hormones fluctuate and how we yeah. feel fluctuates uh, because we're cyclical. So we are, our energetic qualities line up with the seasons of nature and line up with the phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. So these four phases can actually be grouped into two different energetic qualities, our yin qualities and our yang qualities. Mm -hmm. So you're asking me about the magnetic phase. So we're going to focus on our pre-ovulation and our ovulation phase, which is likened to how you feel in springtime and how you feel in summertime. And just take a moment to, to just reflect on like, how do I feel in spring? Especially for those of you who live in North America, who go through a really brutal long winter. How do you feel in, in spring? How do you feel in summer? Mm -hmm. This is what's happening with us in our body, physically and energetically. Our body, this is the more yang phase. So we finish our menstrual cycle. Our body is preparing itself for a new cycle. So the spring phase or pre-ovulation phase is when you start feeling there's more, it's a time of growth and creation. Mm -hmm. So you're coming out of the cocoon of, of your, your menstrual phase and your body is starting to prepare itself for a like potential pregnancy. So mm -hmm. your estrogen levels are starting to rise. Your body, you're stimulating follicles, you're maturing an egg. So as your estrogen levels start to rise, you are feeling <laughs> so as those levels are starting to rise and your body is doing all this creating inside, you are also feeling more motivated, more creative, more magnetic. And we reach that peak at our ovulation phase or our inner summer. So this phase, the ovulation phase, is when we are most fertile. This is when we are also feeling more sensual and sexual. We are more radiant. We want to be out in the world. So this is when we are socializing. So you mentioned, um, you know, women who are single. If you're on, you're single. You're looking to meet someone. You're dating. Like this is the optimal time to be out there and doing this. You're more confident. You have more self-esteem. This mm -hmm. is like the the most magnetic phase. I love it. I love it because it takes us from being like linear to like always being out, always doing to like working with the flow of like, this is my time to be out. And then this is my time to retreat, which takes us into the yin phase, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm always telling my clients and my students to, of course, cooperate with your energy. If there's a time when you're, you're like, it's not like boxed in and absolutely, yeah. if you're feeling it do it right but when you start to slow down and become aware of your phases you'll notice there's a pattern yeah and this is it so ovulation phase we're magnetic we're out there we're out in the world and then as we ovulate, like we finish ovulation phase so pregnancy doesn't occur finish the ovulation phase we move into our more yin energetic phases so that is your premenstrual phase and your menstrual phase yeah this time is really calling us inward yeah, this time is calling us to slow down, to take stock of and celebrate everything that we've done in the month. But it's an energetic quality that makes us kind of want to cocoon mm -hmm. and not be out and be the social butterfly. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in our body is our estrogen levels are starting to go down and our progesterone levels are starting to go up. And that's more of a calming energy. So what's our tendencies here? We are feeling perhaps even more tired, more withdrawn. Um, during our menstrual phase, we are highly intuitive. We, we're tapping into a different type of energy that instead of being outwards, it's inward, which, you know, these two phases often have a bad rap, like the premenstrual phase. And, and we'll talk about what your client had said um, in regards of wanting to break up with her partner every, every time she's in the premenstrual pre phase. <laughs> But there's so much learning for us here because this is, it's like if you are in this phase or you're just about to get your period, but you're dating and you're telling yourself, I have to be out there. I've got to go be social. Right. Your body's actually calling you to rest. 
This is where there's that disconnect. We're not listening. And that could come out as having period pains, having bloating, having a lot of like PMS symptoms, mm -hmm. even within our long-term relationships. If we are not slowing down and listening to how we truly feel and doing what it is that we need, this is where we might come across emotions of feeling frustrated, yeah. being irritated, being annoyed, being really triggered by a partner, by things that would not trigger us two weeks before. Yes. But at this moment, they're doing that and it's like unbearable, can't handle it. Mm -hmm. So the bigger questions for, for those who are listening is like, when you're in this phase, are you honoring how you truly, truly feel? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's such a key, that's such a key thing to note because what I see is like, let's say that it is a moment where you're actually not, not feeling like being out in the world, but you are telling yourself you should be. What happens is then you go out with this energy that's kind of, that's very low. And so you're going to come off a certain way that isn't quite as vibrant. You might have some really crappy interactions because of that. So then it really starts to lower your confidence that you will meet someone. And, and because you're having these interactions that reflect how you're feeling. So then you're creating this that kind of negative momentum when if you just take that break and go out when your energy is high, what you're likely to attract from there will be entirely different. And then you can give yourself the boost of confidence that you're really desiring because it's really discouraging to go out and have like one negative experience after another of course of course and that's yeah. that it's just tuning into uh how we feel and if we yeah. don't realize that our hormones and the phases of our cycle impact that then we're like it's like we're constantly going against the grain we're yeah. forcing something it's like we don't need to force this could be so harmonious this could be so easeful mm. so we need to be aware yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Hmm. And I want to, so stuff that comes up with my students is yeah. like, okay, so when we're looking at, cause it does, we know that it impacts our relationships and, and or dating. Yeah. Um, when we are feeling amazing, when we yeah. are in that magnetic radiant energy, yeah. how would you suggest we tap in and use that energy in our relationships and dating? So I would actually, I would almost want to take it a step back and say what would be really like helpful is to, during your inner fall and inner winter, to actually like do some like digging in to understand like what is your vision, mm. right? So let's say like you're, you're creating a vision around, okay, you've been in your partnership for a year or two, many years, so it's been seven years, and you start to be like okay we're a little off track and what we had envisioned because we're getting a bit stuck in the routine of life so actually taking some time to just sit with how would i like to experience this relationship like what what shifts can we make that we're both on board to make and then use that energy of like your inner spring and inner summer where you have more physical energy to say you know what let's get out of the house and let's go outside or let's go check out this new restaurant or this i mean maybe outside of these current times is a little more challenging but like using that energy that you have let's say in the context of being in a relationship to live out the relationship you want nothing is more tragic than waiting years to meet someone you're with them then you get so used to it that you just start taking it for granted and not really living the full potential of what this partnership can be and offer Right. So like, okay, it's just like fall and winter. You might be more prone to like staying at home and turning on a movie makes sense. But now let's use this energy of like your inner spring and summer to get out and shake things up in your relationship. Also, I think you mentioned that's when you're feeling like more sexual. Yep. Use that to like <laughs> spice up your life with your partner, right? Like use that to just tap into like a different part of you that you don't need to be sexy goddess vixen every day of the week, every day of the month. Like, let's be real. Yeah. But if there's a few days of the month where you can like really play with that energy, like what will that do for your relationship? Mm -hmm. And then of course, if you're single, use it to get out and like if you're, if you're by, like if your energy is high, right? So it's kind of like your frequency is high. You're feeling good. You're feeling energetic. You're maybe like a little brighter in your skin, getting out in the world to just do the things you already love doing, right? But just like your, your eyes are a bit brighter. Your heart feels a bit lighter. There's like a pep in your step because you have some more energy. That's what attracts. Like I remember working with one woman and 
she had met someone because he said, I saw you dancing on the sidewalk. Like she, she was with some friends and she was dancing around and he's like, he immediately just noticed her because she was in like her joie de vivre. She was just enjoying life. Right. So if you can really like harness that energy and get out in the world without this like hard intention of meeting someone. Right. Cause then that starts to kind of like contract you a little and you're instead of just truly enjoying you're like really looking really hard but I love to just get out and be flirty not so much anymore but like when I was single one of my favorite ways to flirt was to just walk around the street and smile with my eyes or just smile at someone and like make some more direct eye contact like use it to be a bit more bold and just fun and flirtatious without taking it too seriously I love it. I love it. And I love it. <laughs> because, and one thing, one thing I want to highlight of what you said was using the inner fall and inner winter. So premenstrual and, and menstrual phase, I would really uh, highlight in the menstrual phase, we are really intuitive. This yeah. is time to meditate, to journal, to look within. And so you're planning how it is you want to like what it is. You want to be more aligned with your relationship and what it is you want to add to it it's a beautiful time to do it, to go in at that time. Yes. And it's not a time to go into action. Yes. But got, and, I, and, and then, and like even our inner spring is our time to plant the seeds, you know, to set the intentions and then go out. Yeah. Like, like energy is everything. And you're highlighting that in such a beautiful way, dating and in relationships, our energy is everything. Yeah. So like your inner spring could be like making a reservation to like a cooking class or whatever it is. Right. And then, the week later you're out there you're at the class and so that you don't feel like you have to always be doing fun adventurous activities you know unless that just feels really good to you and your partner that's fine but to to just say okay like now we retreat and we do like some more cooking at home we maybe watch movies this week like when i'm feeling like a bit crampy and tired and um, inviting your partner into the process of what you are going through and how this is for you and how you're supporting yourself and how he can, he or she can help support you. Right. So then, and then getting out in the world. So, yeah. and, and then of course, in your, in your inner fall, in your, in your winter, I that's want, your, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's your space. There's two, two things. So I want to make a comment and then ask you a question about specifically about the yeah. inner fall. Um, the comment is what, what you just like build up on what you just said, because we think we need to show up consistently. And this is within our culture, this very linear, uh, that we need to show up the same way every single day. And we can't, we're, we're, <laughs> it's not sustainable. It's not loving. And it's not, it's, it's not in our nature to show up the same way. So if we expect ourselves to show up the same way in our relationships and when we're dating, we are going to inevitably fail. Um, it also brings us a more into connection with our partners or whoever it is we're dating. When we show all aspects of our beautiful, complex beings, our nature, like we're not going to be in ovulation, inner summer, magnetic radiant all the time, radiant energy all the time. That inner winter or inner fall is a beautiful time to share with our partner, like how we're really feeling. Mm -hmm. The vulnerability, that connection with our partner to share what's going on, it creates a deeper connection. It gives them an opportunity to support us. Yes. Nourish us when we share. So like even the, the, the breaking the boundaries of or the stigma that it's just, we just talk about periods and with women, but we could share with our partner and they know where we are and then they can support us. Cause that's a huge game changer. Yes. Huge thing. Completely. Yeah. And instead of it being like, you know, your partner's afraid of when you're in a yeah. <laughs> PMS stage, you know, it's like really, like really, really. And, and what I love about the work that you do is like for me, it's like, oh, I'm a, like, I'm this like magical creature. Like, it, like my body is so magical. It's doing all these amazing things without me trying. And if I tune into that, I can unlock this whole other layer to myself. And I think sharing that with your partner just like highlights what a goddess you really are. Like innately. Yes. <laughs> innately with doing, without doing a thing. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then this is the stuff that but unlocking and unlearning all of the, the ideas yes. that we had around. Yes. Our yeah. Um, yeah. So we're looking at our premenstrual or menstrual phase. And like you had said, your, your client is like, okay, journaling wants to break up with her boyfriend every time yeah. she's just about to get her period. Yeah. 
how do we distinguish between this is my sensitivity vulnerabilities because of what's happening hormonally in my body versus yeah. actually this is something a really big question of me a pattern that perhaps i need to reflect on mm -hmm. in regards to like is this relationship for me yeah. how do we know the difference oh i mean but isn't that the question of life what's my fear and what's my intuition like isn't that the question of life to know okay is this nagging thought just like my mind playing tricks on me or is this really truly my intuition saying you need to, to pay attention so in either way you just have to pay attention so really checking in with how you physically feel will, will help a lot because what i find is when it's something from my inner knowing right like that's a really calm calm delivery right so like i even think to times when i'm like i need to break up with this boyfriend in the past there were times where even though my mind and my inner being wanted the same thing for me to break up, my mind's like stressing me out, but my inner being just says, now, now's the time. And it's so calm, but using, like you really need to, to, to tune in so that you can feel, is this an incessant fear that's coming up or is it my inner knowing? And then of course, writing about it, right? So I have a whole framework that I take clients through to really help them first flesh out this is the story that i'm inside of right so the story i'm inside of is i need to break up with my boyfriend because of xyz really examining how that story and perspective is infiltrating the way you're you're showing up in your relationship and then seeing what about that feels true what about that feels maybe a little bit false and and can you look at it from another angle and from that other angle what do you see do you see the same thing do you see something different? Mm -hmm. And really sinking into that, using your body to guide you the whole way through. So you know, this, like I'm being pulled to yes, I'm being pulled to no, right? So even when my clients are making decisions about anything, I'm like, and they're like, hey, let me think about it. I'm like, oh, don't think about it. Like, think about it, do your pros and cons list, then put it away and feel about it, right? Feel about it, feel, Feel the scenario of breaking up with your boyfriend, feel the scenario of staying in the relationship and see where your body is pulling you towards. And this takes practice. So have so much grace with yourself and also just be aware that sometimes when your energy is low, it's a good time to tune in, but it might not be the best time to make a decision. It's super clear, yes. Right, so tune in, do the writing, see what your body's feeling all of that let it all come out and then just wait wait till your energy is a bit higher and you're feeling a bit better to say is there something i need to action on that's that's perfect and i love that you're bringing your clients into their body because mm -hmm. exactly our mind is the rational but it's not necessarily the best place to go our body body is boss you know and that's the work that i do with like incorporating integrating yoga and mindfulness into menstrual cycle awareness is that we connect to the body so it's a beautiful time premenstrual is because the layers between our inner and outer world is thinner during this time so we're not expending our energy outwards our body this is why we 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 end up feeling like oh i need to break up or whatever i need to do it's because the bigger the things we've been ignoring during our high peak time yeah are bubbling up to the surface. So this is why like, I encourage the stu my students to like look at if there's a pattern, if every month it's something coming up about your work or your family or your partner and your relationship, there's a pattern there. So maybe it's not the thing that's triggering you, but it's the things underneath. What are the main yeah. issues? And so I love that you bring them into their body because our body will really feel and connect to, to what's true. And that's, that's huge. And, um, with menstrual cycle awareness, so we, there's a, a practice that you could do, which is called the bleed on it method. And you don't actually have to bleed on anything. <laughs> <laughs> I went all kinds like, of Oh my God, where are we going? <laughs> um, but like what you said of like, you don't necessarily need to take action. This is your time to draw in, reflect, feel, you know, tune in and then see what happens. And the bleed on it method is about if there's something that is troubling you, something that you want clarity on to tune into it on day one of your period, because that's mm -hmm. your time where you're really in tune. So you connect 
you meditate, you journal, you feel into your body, you, you ask your question, you, you, you write down what it is you want clarity on, and then leave it for the month. Have that in the background, you know? That. Have it in the background, you know, to notice things that are coming up, but know that like you're letting it kind of simmer for the month. You can put it out there. We don't need to ignore it, but ignore it, but like keep coming back to it without the need to make a decision. Mm. Perhaps when we're most fragile is not the best time to make that decision, mm -hmm. right? When we're most like vulnerable. Such a perfect blend of like a masculine and feminine approach, right? Like asking the question, but then the feminine is like relaxing back to receive the answer. I love yeah. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. and how can people how can people learn more about menstrual cycle awareness and the work that you do and the the, the workshops that you have coming up or like the the five week mm -hmm. can you tell people about blood magic yeah. so yeah people can learn more about what i do following me on instagram and we could add that afterwards in our notes yeah. but on instagram and on my website but if you really, if the, everything that we're talking about today is like getting you curious and you're like, oh, I want to know more. I want to tune in and connect with my menstrual cycle and see how I could harness this power of my menstrual cycle and or not suffer through any more painful cycles, right? Um, I'm offering a course called Blood Magic. It is a five-week course. We're starting September 14th. So that's pretty soon um, and we are going to be unpacking we're going to be unpacking our period story our her story the maternal lineage and how that impacts what we live through now uh, we're going to be unpacking each phase of our menstrual cycle and not just biologically like what's happening physically but like the stuff that we're talking about the energetic mm -hmm. elements as well the spiritual elements and each week we tune in live, that's recorded, but then I also give the students um, a pre-recorded yoga class that's adapted for each phase. So the type of exercise, the type of sequencing, the type of practices you wanna tune in when you're ovulating or you're in your inner spring, and what you need and what you need to support your body when you're in your menstrual phase or your premenstrual phase. And there's journaling throughout it. There's so much goodness. There's uh, meditation, journaling, yoga nidra. Um, I've really put all the tools that I've been using or, uh, throughout my practice into this course to share with women the tools that they could use, not just during these five weeks, but once they leave this course, how it's gonna shift how you experience your period for the rest of the years that you are a menstruating, menstruating human, you know? Like this, you carry this with you. Yes, that's so key to note. I feel that like the value carries on, and this is like 10 plus years of your experience, right? More, well, you mean in terms of our bleeding? or yoga or like all of your yeah. learning all of your practices it's like like more than a decade worth of your wisdom and experience like going into this more yeah and because my background is in public health exercise science uh, yeah. and health promotion so i'm combining the evidence base you yeah. know science behind it with the spirituality which i find a lot of times is missing and that women just aren't taught about their bodies and it's like that's that's bull, that's bullshit we need to know what's going on in our body we need to know how powerful we are mm -hmm. and we can do that when we tune into our cycles i love it mm. i love it so much thank you so we'll put, we'll put the notes for like we will put that blood magic where they can reach you where they can find you Yes, and for my community, who no doubt are totally intrigued by the work that you do, um, how can they find out more? So my website is dianascanner.com. On Instagram, it's askdiana underscore. Um, and I am also, I have one spot left in Date with Dignity. Yeah, super exciting. So that's my six-month mastermind. So it's really a deep dive. And I'm taking the women. It's a small group where maximum 10 women um through my whole framework of like moving you out of feeling anxious or avoidant in your dating to feeling so secure so empowered understanding how your fears come into play and how they create sabotage right and really helping you over the months to move out of that fear and out of the overthinking and to embody your most empowered self what is her vision how what's true for her how does she show up? How does she communicate that with someone that she's interested in? How does she stand on her worth and set her boundaries, which 
boundaries is always like such a tricky word for people, but boundaries is where like you truly stand in your power and help someone acknowledge how valuable and worthy you really are. So it's essentially just moving into complete confidence in your love life. And again, that's something that we're not taught, right? This is something that we are not taught and is something that will literally change your life. How it will change your life. And just like blood magic, these are tools. So besides just moving through the framework and having someone to, like having me as a love coach to like roll up my sleeves and be in there with you to redirect you and keep you true to your vision and help you with all those subtleties and nuances, these are tools and lessons that will last you a lifetime. Like the value is, is it's an investment in your, in your current self and in your future self. I love it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so good. It's so cool how our work connects and even like going into the body, that's something that I really start to incorporate in the last two years and what a difference it's made in myself and in the women that I work mm -hmm. with. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, we need to get out of the mind. This is the thing yeah. that connect is that you use it, use it, right? But like understand that it's not the driver. Yeah, it's not everything. And there's so much that we can learn from tuning into our inner wisdom and our intuition that we some we 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 don't value or we're not taught to value. So um yeah, all this this work is like this combination. I feel like imagine the power of a woman doing both. Oh God, that's like full blown. Watch out, ladies. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I love that we had this conversation again. Thank you so much. I love it. And um, yeah, to all the women who are listening, if you have questions for both Diana and myself, uh, feel free to to reach out. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Lots of love. <laughs>